You may not have thought about baking your own crackers or flatbreads, but you'll be surprised to learn how easy they are to make. Today, I'm gonna to teach you four unique and delicious recipes that I know you'll be eager to serve at your next party. Julie's flatbread, a really thin, crispy bread, artistically designed with beautiful, colorful toppings. Blue cheese pecan icebox crackers, very easy to make and really delicious. And cheddar bits, these tiny little square crackers, well, you can eat virtually dozens of them. And thyme crackers, wonderful with soft cheese and olives and other things that you can put on a spread like this. Today on Martha Bakes, enjoy. These crispy flatbreads act as a canvas for colorful ingredients such as green tomatillos, sage leaves, cherry tomatoes, red and yellow. I like to think of them as edible works of art and they taste really good and they are fun to make. And I first saw something like it cooked by my friend Julia Williamson and I wanna give her credit for uh, inspiring us to make such beautiful, beautiful flatbread. To make the dough, very simple. A quarter of a cup of warm water. Water shouldn't be any hotter than 100 degrees. A pinch of sugar. And one and a quarter teaspoons of dry active yeast. Let that proof. Proofing means uh, you're activating the yeast because yeast is a living microscopic single cell organism that converts its food through fermentation into alcohol and carbon dioxide as it grows. And if you watch what happens in this little bit of water and sugar, this active dry yeast really does start to form those little carbon dioxide bubbles. And now to add in that process of growing, add one and a half teaspoons of your all-purpose flour. Active dry yeast comes in two forms, active and quick rising, which takes half as long to leaven the bread. Uh, now, uh, in a bowl, measure out your flour. We need three cups of all-purpose unbleached white flour. I'll just put that right in your bowl. Dipping and scooping and measuring accurately. A quarter of a cup of cornmeal. Now this is finely ground. This adds a crunchiness to the dough, and I love that little bit of crunchiness. One teaspoon of salt, one and a half teaspoons of black pepper. And whisk this together and use a quarter of a cup of rosemary needles. And we want fresh, and that goes right into the dough. So I see a few little bubbles forming down in the yeast, so it's proofing. You can add the flour all at once right into this bowl. And one cup of water, not warmer than 100 degrees. And this, you see, is fitted with a dough hook that allows you to knead bread as if you were kneading it pretty much by hand. Oil a bowl like this. Uh, with some nice olive oil. This is where the dough will have its rising. And once it forms a ball like this, it's almost ready to turn out on a floured surface. Give it a few more kneads. You want it soft, but not sticky. And knead with the back of your hand. Don't incorporate too much more flour because it really doesn't knead it. And ultimately, it becomes less and less sticky and nice and smooth and put it like this, nice smooth side up, in your oiled bowl. And put it in a warm place, not too hot, but warm place to rise until this ball is about double in size. So here's our dough, doubled, a little bit more than doubled in size. And, and just scrape it out of the bowl, deflating it as you do that onto a floured surface. I like working right on my kitchen counter there and the dough is so soft and nice i like to just turn it into kind of an oval which i'm cutting into six pieces because i want to make six flatbreads so cut this into six so make six little balls and i put this right on a parchment lined baking sheet and just cover with a bowl like that keeps it from drying out. You don't want your dough to dry out. So now spread your flour again. 
and start flattening your dough. It's almost like a pizza dough, a nice rosemary infused pizza dough. And use your rolling pin and roll out into a long oval. It can be odd shaped. No two are identical. So it's really like creating a little bit of artwork. And you see the dough is very nice, really nice pepper speckled and rosemary studded. And these go right onto unbuttered, ungreased baking sheets. Oil with delicious, best quality olive oil, the whole top. And the oil is essential. You have to have a good quality oil. So look for extra virgin olive oil, domestic or imported, doesn't matter as long as it is really good. Now, red onions slice from top to bottom. They can be flared out like this on the bread. They can be broken into more pieces. This is a painting, your own flatbread painting. And then tomatillas. Now these are an unusual uh, member of the tomato family. They are sour, delicious. You put those on. And then I like to do red and yellow tomatoes. Intersperse or just this one, I'm only going to use yellow tomatoes. I love how that looks. And make sure that there's a little bit of something everywhere sprinkling of more black pepper. And this is sea salt, really crunchy sea salt. And sprinkle that all over. And a little bit more drizzling of olive oil on the vegetables. Preheat your oven, of course, to 400 degrees and bake each of these immediately until they're a beautiful golden brown, 12 to 14 minutes. Now, isn't that fun? Your kids will have so much fun decorating the tops of the flatbreads. So this goes in and work on the next. So I feel like Picasso of the flatbread. And you will too when you start creating your own beautiful arrangements of colorful vegetables on this very simple to make and delicious dough. Enjoy. These crackers are made from a rich, fine textured dough, and we call them blue cheese pecan icebox crackers. So today I am using three ounces of Tilton cheese in the crackers, four tablespoons of cold butter, a half a cup of pecans that have been toasted in a 300 degree oven for a few minutes until they're just toasted. Now put these nuts in the food processor and grind them until they're sort of very, very fine. Okay, and into here now, three quarters of a cup of all-purpose flour. Just dip and level. So pulse the flour with the nuts. You might want to scrape down just the corners. Nuts are oily, flour is not. You can see them kind of sticking in the corners here. Now your butter, four tablespoons cut into small pieces. That can be cold, not icy. Use the pulsing lever on your machine to make sure you keep moving everything around. Now add your Stilton cheese. It takes a little while for this to mix all together. There, it's nice and moist. It is completely mixed up and it will make a beautiful cracker. And we want to make this into a roll. Use a piece of plastic wrap and get the whole thing out in one ball. And we want to make a two and a half inch diameter roll which is not going to be very long. This only makes about 18 crackers. So you can double the recipe. It works very well doubled. And I have discovered 
watching my favorite sushi chefs, I have discovered that this little bamboo mat works very well to form cylinders, just like the sushi chefs use for their seaweed rolls, uh, hand rolls. This you want to form into, as I said, about two and a half inches in diameter. So this is about the right length, about five and a half inches long and about two to two and a half inches wide. Now wrap this around with your plastic and put this on your bamboo. And roll it up. This will make the roll absolutely level and all the same thickness. There, and just chill it like that, or wait till it chills and then you can take your bamboo off and use it for something else, make a sushi roll for yourself for lunch. So our roll has chilled nicely, at least for a half hour in the, in the fridge. Unwrap it and quickly slice it. The thinner the slice, the higher the yield and the shorter the baking time. But we're trying to get, oh, approximately, as I said, about 18 crackers. Use a sharp knife. And this dough is so nice that it does slice very well. 18 lovely homemade crackers. Stilton pecan crackers. So now place these in a 325 degree preheated oven for about 25 to 35 minutes. Set your timer, check that they are nice and golden brown and firm in the center. They're best baked while the dough is still chilled, so get them into the oven. So this is a very nice small snack with a glass of white burgundy. I can't think of anything more comforting than these delicious Stilton crackers, a wedge of Stilton, some grapes and apricots. You can even throw a few nice almonds on there, Marcona almonds, what a nice snack. Your guests will most certainly be asking for this recipe. Do you open cracker packages sometimes and then taste the cracker and wonder why did I buy this? Because it has no taste? Well, here is a recipe for a crispy thyme cracker that makes a lovely presentation on an hors d'oeuvre platter and tastes really good. Very easy to make. Two cups of all-purpose flour, unbleached in the bowl of a food processor, and one and a half teaspoons of salt, two teaspoons of fresh thyme. Just pulse this just to incorporate all those ingredients together. Three tablespoons of thyme leaves and one teaspoon of sugar. Pulse the dry ingredients together. Add three tablespoons of butter. See how I've cut them into little tiny squares and one cup of heavy cream and just pour the cream all over the dry ingredients. And process until everything's incorporated and it kind of forms a ball. There, it's coming together nicely. That's just about right. And turn this onto a floured board. Just a little bit of flour on your work surface. In this kitchen, we have a big countertop, so you can really roll out strudel dough if you like. It's very, very spacious and roomy and nice. I try to get all the dough. It's a little bit sticky, but that's okay. We'll just roll this into two rectangles, cut in half, and chill. This has to be chilled before you roll the crackers. Just pat it and roll it into a large rectangle, which you can then cut in half. Now, if you're making crackers, it's a good idea to make a lot of crackers. It's fun to give crackers as a gift. Uh, great snacks. Keep a jar full of crackers on your counter and uh, make more than one batch. All the crackers that we're making today are utterly delicious. Wrap it well in your plastic wrap. 
and chill for approximately 30 minutes to an hour, just until it's really cold. So rolling the dough to the right thickness is key. If they're too thick, you can barely bite into them, and if they're too thin, they can burn easily or they'll crumble when you try to uh, put a piece of cheese on top of the cracker. So uh, this is half the recipe. I roll it right onto the parchment on which I'm going to bake it. So a little bit of bench flour on the parchment. Roll this out. This works perfectly well if you just roll it the size of the parchment paper. And I'm going to use a tool that some of you may never have seen, but it's kind of a fun tool. And it does a quick job of cutting these crackers into long, thin triangles. It's a croissant cutter. I like trying to figure out how the professionals do things. And you should too. It's fun to be curious in the kitchen. And there are some really great places to buy baking tools, kitchen tools. Look for professional suppliers online and you can find some really interesting things. And it should lift nicely from your, from your paper. And you don't want any flour on the cracker itself, so brush off excess. And now cut. This is a croissant cutter. This is what the bakers who make all those delectable puffy croissants use to cut long triangles. This is the shape of one croissant. So I thought it would be kind of fun just to try using this. And we'll just cut very little waste. See the triangles? It's sort of fun. You can do that with a pastry wheel too yourself. Now I cut these triangles in half, just like this, to make a nice cracker. Now remember, you can do this without a croissant cutter. You can just use a pizza wheel like this. And this little end piece here, I'm gonna cut off a little bit. I'm not even going to cut that edge straight because I want a rustic looking cracker. Now, one last step. We need an egg white, lightly beaten, brushed all over the top of the cracker. and just lightly brush the tops of the crackers. And sprinkle with sea salt. If you can find real French crystalline sea salt, all the better. This looks really pretty. It's a sparkly salt and flat crystals. Now, get this right onto your baking sheet. The parchment, it's very nice to just do it right on the parchment. And this goes into a 375 degree oven that's preheated, bake until golden brown and crispy. And that takes 17 to 25 minutes. So cool your crackers once they come out of the oven, cool them on a rack like this. And then when you're ready to serve, they look so rustic, so fun, and very tasty. That sea salt on top is a crunch. The thyme has a delectable flavor, and you made them yourself. Homemade crackers, homemade thyme crackers. Enjoy. Seven ingredients and a food processor are all it takes to make a homemade version of um, a certain zesty, cheesy, store-bought cracker. It's hard to imagine, but it really does work. You need white cheddar, two cups, you could use orange cheddar if you like. Put that right into the food processor. So now you have your cheddar. This is number one of seven ingredients. Cayenne pepper, a quarter of a teaspoon. Paprika, a quarter of a teaspoon. Fresh sweet paprika. A teaspoon of coarse salt. One stick of butter. Number five two tablespoons of heavy cream, that's number six, and number seven, one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And you're gonna process all these ingredients together until a nice dough is formed. And pulse. 
Now, this is getting very well mixed. It's going to form a ball. And there, I think we have it. This is our dough for our cheesy bits. Yes, perfect. Now we're gonna make four little rectangles measuring four inches by five inches. And the thickness will be just approximately what we're gonna cut into one inch cheesy bits. So need four pieces of plastic wrap. Divide your dough. Comes right out. You can make dozens of these. It's a great kind of gift. And it's a nice thing to send to school. So divide this into quarters. There. Now each one flatten until it's four by five. So what I'd like to do is just sort of cover it and roll it into the rectangle. That's five by four. And just wrap it well and chill it. Continue until they're all done, all four, and you will have your little cheesy bits ready to cut. So here's our chilled rectangle. And we want to cut into one inch square. So this is now just about four inches. And uh, you can do this by eye, or if you need a straight edge, you can use a straight edge. But I'm just going to do it by eye. These little sharp wheels are excellent. So in half first, if you like, and then in inch squares. And you want to put these on a parchment lined baking sheet and chill them well before you put them into the oven. Now, cheddar, where does cheddar come from? Well, it comes from a town in England called Cheddar. Um, and that's where the cow's milk cheese originated. Still being made there today, but it's also being made in Vermont and Wisconsin uh, and many, many other places. It's a very popular cheese. One batch of this dough, as I've shown you in this recipe, makes approximately 100 cheesy bits. After chilling these, preheat your oven to 325 degrees and bake until pale golden brown. And that takes about 15 to 17 minutes. So this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. Let them cool a little bit before you serve them. But serve them fresh, they're very delicious. I have them on this tray with some walnut halves, some sopressata, olives. What a delicious snack. Pour a glass of red wine or possibly a really nice beer. These are utterly delicious. And don't forget to tune into the next episode of Martha Bakes. See you then. Brush tortillas with olive oil. Using a pizza wheel, cut a variety of tortillas like corn, flour, and whole wheat into wedges. You may also cut tortillas into one inch wide strips. Place the cut tortillas on a rimmed baking sheet. Season with coarse salt and bake at 375 degrees until crisp. Serve these with your favorite salsa or guacamole.